Okay, everyone come, right? Hello. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Pay homage to the Blessed One. Dear friends, Today, June 4th, 2024, at the Masuka Meditation Center. So, I would like to deliver Dhamma Talk, Sutta number 7 from Majjhima Nikaya, Vattu Pama Sutta. So, Vattu, Vatta plus Upama. So, Vatta means cloth. Upama means simile. So sutta means discourse. So the simile of the cloth. So in this sutta, the Buddha talk about all kinds of unwholesome. How unwholesome arise in our mind when we meditate. And all the unwholesome disturb us a lot. But if we know the six hours, then all unwholesome fade away. But you have to apply again and again, you know. It will take time, <laughs> right? <laughs> and Buddha also talk about the nine qualities of the Buddha six qualities of the Dhamma and nine qualities of the Sangha. So uh, what we recite early morning. So why we are going to recite that? Because the nine qualities of the Buddha remind us to develop our mind. So Buddha was like human being, like you, like me, like everyone. But he fulfilled the perfection in the past when he was Bodhisattva. You know, he never break up the precept. So many, many times he were born in the past. He did the kick, did all the time wholesome actions. Eventually, from the Tusita heaven. He came in a human world because his parami already completed. And after coming into the human world, then when he was 16 years old, then he left the household life. No, I'm sorry, and when he was 16 years old, he got married. And when he was 29 years old, he left royal palace and he practiced meditation six years and eventually he got enlightenment right and nine six qualities of the dhamma after getting enlightenment he was thinking what i gain is very deep my teaching is really deep and he was thinking that I don't think so that people will understand in the world my teaching. So the last time I explained you the king of the God, the deities. So when his chair was shaking like this and he was thinking that who is taking my chair? Maybe somebody want to take my chair? Why my chair is shaking now? And the king of the deities used his psychic power and he saw, wow, in the human realm, in the human world, the Buddha arose 
after getting enlightenment and he thought that I'm not going to teach because the ordinary people will not understand my Dhamma. And then Kino was thinking I should go down, I should go to the human realm and then invite him. So he came down and in front of the Buddha he bowed three times and he said, Venerable Sir, I know whatever you gained is so deep. You got enlightenment. So I am going to invite you. Please teach this wonderful Dhamma for the happiness of the many, for the benefit of the many. I am going to invite you. Please accept my invitation. And he accepted the, the king of the deity's invitations and he started teachings for the happiness of the many, for the benefit of the many. So the six qualities of the Dhamma, you will see they are mentioned, my teaching is visible. Everybody can see that. And my teaching, if someone follow and practice, they will get immediately result. So my teaching is immediately effective, he said in this in the six qualities of the Dhamma. So, 45 years he preached, he taught for the benefit of the many, for the happiness of the many. So that's what all his teaching we call Dhamma. The last one is nine qualities of the Sangha. So, we are Sangha, Samanara Sangha, Mang Sangha, lay people Sangha. You see? So the Sangha hold the Dhamma. If no Sangha, Dhamma will disappear. You know, the people will not get any chance to, I now take refuge in the Buddha. I now take refuge in the Dhamma. I now take refuge in the Sangha. If no Sangha, then people will not get chance to learn how to practice, you know. So during the Buddha's times, when the Buddha passed away, you know, the Sangha keep memorizing because there were many Arahant that time, you know. First Buddhist council, they memorized Dhamma and Vinaya. Second Buddhist Council, they keep memorizing Dhamma and Vinaya. And the fourth, uh, the third Buddhist Council, during the Kin Asuka, then from the Dhamma, they divide it into Abhidhamma. So, Abhidhamma, Sutta, and Vinaya. During the third Buddhist Council, sponsored by Kin Asuka. And during the fourth Buddhist council, in, which which held in Sri Lanka, then Tripitaka written down the stool. So if you go in Kandy, I never go actually. I did. I didn't go there. I heard if you go in Kandy, Sri Lankan Kandy, you will see the Tripitaka written down the stone, big stone, and. In the ground, seven floor down, they kept it. Nobody can go there. If you go, just you can see it by television. You know, if you throw the boom, and Tripitaka will, will not be destroyed. This is what I heard from the people. I never go there actually. So, that's why the, in the Sangha, during the Buddha's times, also they taught for the benefit of the people, for the happiness of the people. At present also they are teaching, they are practicing and helping others to liberate from the suffering and in the future also the Sangha will do continuously. 
that's why then I determined that if you all of you in the morning when you recite then to remind you this is the nine qualities of the Buddha this is the six qualities of the Dhamma this is the nine qualities of the Sangha so when you read the translation but I know when I recite in Pali you know sometimes you think that one this may be singing song right <laughs> This is the way how to recite, you know, this is my way. <laughs> I don't know how, how would other people, you know. <laughs> so, Muditananda asked me, Bhante, so did you, did you sing song before? Your chanting is so wonderful. <laughs> so, so, he was a singer, right? <laughs> so, he loved it. <laughs> So, and the Blessed One said, actually this Sutta, the Buddha taught to the monks, the simile of the song. And he said, O monks, if you can abandon all the unwholesome, covetousness, hatred, envy, ill will, conceit, impoliteness, arrogance, cheating, all those things, if you can abandon, joy arises in your mind, happiness arises in your mind. So all those things he explained. And eventually, you can liberate from suffering. So I am the liberate one, one who liberate himself. He or she know, I am liberate now, I am not born anymore, this is my last birth, you know. And then he also talked about the precept, he said, oh monks, please don't break up the precept. When you keep the precept, you understand yourself, your mind is purified, you are the holy one. Your mind is pure and agile. You'll experience that. You feel that. And he said, all of you, the advanced meditator. So I'm going to teach now how to practice loving kindness, six direction, all direction, compassion. Six direction, all direction, joy, all dire six direction, all direction, and equanimity, six direction, and all direction. He taught that. And eventually, at that moment, one Brahmi, his name is Sundarika Bharadwaja. He is not Buddhist, but when Buddha was, Buddha was teaching to the monks and he came, he said, Gautama Buddha, he came and then said one side, you know, he said, Gautama Buddha, why, why, why didn't you go to Bahuka river? And Buddha said, Brahmin. Sundarikya Bhara Dwaja, why I should go to Bahuke River? You know, if you go to Bahuke River and take shower there, all the evil things from your mind go away. And Buddha said, Sundarikya Bhara Dwaja, this is not my way. I don't think I don't think that if I go to Bahuka River and take shower, whatever I, I committed, whatever I did, the unwholesome actions in this human life, everything will disappear. No. So my ways, you keep the precept, 
you practice the Dhamma. Whatever action you did in this very life, whether good or bad, it will come to you. So one day, you know you Sangaranda, right? Yeah, Sangaranda asked me, karma, bad karma and then good karma. Sangaranda or Buddhananda, I think I, 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 I couldn't remember. Any, maybe anyone. So, Buddhananda, right? I think Buddhananda asks about the uh, karma, bad karma and then good karma. You know, in this world, people are doing good karma, good actions and also bad actions. So, when you do your good karma, you did a lot of good karma in this human life and before passing away, if you can remember all those things, you definitely reborn in the heaven. It will support you because you have a lot of good, good karma merit, you know. But if you do the bad karma and be, before passing away, the bad sign, bad nimitta will arise. And if you die at that moment, you may reborn in hell or in, uh, as a ghost realm or demon realm or maybe you know the animal kingdom <coughs> this is according to the you can see the chart over there you know this is according to the buddhism so and sundarika bharadwaja brahmin sundarika bharadwaja when buddha explained to him you told me for taking shower from the Bahuka river. I don't think so the people when go the Bahuka river for taking shower and all the sins, all the evil things will go away from their mind. In India, you know, and then for the Hindu, uh, Hinduism, so they go to the river for taking shower. And then they think that, okay, I did the whole life, I did done wholesome actions, you know, evil things. When I go and take shower, because that river water very little bit warm, you know, so they think that that water is pure. But Buddhism never said that. So Buddha said, Sundarika, listen to me, what I am saying. You should keep the precept, practice the Dhamma. And the Buddha explained everything to him. And he understood what the Buddha said. The Brahmin, Sundarika Bharadwaja, understood. And he said, Parallel sir, your Dhamma is excellent, magnificent Master Gotama, magnificent Master Gotama. I understood what you taught to us, what you taught me. I want to please accept me as your disciple. Please ordain me as a Samanara and full ordination. Then Buddha said, O monks, come, the Buddha Sasana, and he became monk and taught him how to practice meditation and he practiced eventually he attained arahanship. So this sutta is finished. <laughs> <laughs> so in this sutta mention evam me sutta evam me sutang ekang samayang bhagava savatiyang viharati jetavane anatha pindika sarame not song okay <laughs> so that means evam me sutang does have a heart 
ekang samayang bagawa. That means on one occasion, savatiyang viharati jetavane anata pindika sarame. So at savatti, jetavane in jetas group anata pindika sarame at anata pindika's part. So that means when the Buddha was living in the Savatthi, Jatavane Jatavana Monastery, Anatha Pindika Sarami, that means that monastery donated by Anatha Pindika. So when the Buddha was staying there and he delivered Dhamma talk to the monks. So there he addressed because thus, because Venerable Sir, they replied, the Blessed One said this, because suppose a cloth were defiled and stained and a dyer dipped it in some dye or other, whether blue or yellow or red or pink, it would, it would look poorly dyed or impure in color. Why is that? Because of the impurity of the cloth. So too, when the mind is defiled, an unhappy destination may be expected. Because suppose a cloth were pure and bright, and a dyer dipped it in some dye or other whether blue or yellow or red or pink it would look well dyed and pure in color why is that because of the purity of the cloth so too when mind is undefined a happy destination may be expected you see how clearly Buddha explained? Because what is the imperfection that defile mind? Covetousness and unrighteous greed is an imperfection that defiles mind. Ill will is an imperfection that defiles mind. Anger is an imperfection that defiles mind. Resentment is an imperfection that defiles mind. Contempt is an imperfection that defiles mind. Rudeness and unpoliteness is an imperfection that defiles mind. Envy is an imperfection that defiles mind. Greedy materialism is an imperfection that defiles mind. Deceit is an imperfection that defiles mind. Cheating is an imperfection that defiles mind. Bullheaded inflexibility is an imperfection that defiles mind. Rivalry is an imperfection that defiles mind. Conceit is an imperfection that defiles mind. Arrogance is an imperfection that defiles mind. Vanity is an imperfection that defiles mind. Negligence is an imperfection that defiles mind. So now you got the list of the unwholesome. <laughs> so all this is arising in our mind. You have the key already. So use the six hours. Then it will be weaker, weaker, weaker. We will not arise anymore. Right? And Buddha said to those disciples, Knowing that covetousness and unrighteous greed is an imperfection that defiles mind, a bhikkhu abandons it. So how do you abandon? By the sixers, right? So you know, this is unwholesome. I am not going to develop it. Just use the sixers there. Then it, you are in the right path. You can abandon it. 
knowing that ill will is in imperfection that defiles mind, abhikku abandons it. Knowing that anger is an imperfection that defiles mind, abhikku abandons it. Knowing that resentment is an imperfection that defiles mind, abhikku abandons it. Knowing that contempt is an imperfection that defiles mind, abhikku abandons it. Knowing that rudeness and impoliteness is an imperfection that defiles mind, abhikku abandons it. Knowing that envy is an imperfection that defiles mind, abhikku abandons it. Knowing that greedy materialism is an imperfection that defiles mind, abhikku abandons it. Knowing that deceit is an imperfection that defiles mind, abhikku abandons it. Knowing that cheating is an imperfection that defiles mind, abhikku abandons it. Knowing that bullheaded inflexibility is an imperfection that defiles mind, abhikku abandons it. Knowing that rivalry is an imperfection that defiles mind, abhikku abandons it. Knowing that conceit is an imperfection that defiles mind, abhikku abandons it. Knowing that arrogance is an imperfection that defiles mind, abhikku abandons it. Knowing that vanity is an imperfection that defiles mind, abhikku abandons it. Knowing that negligence is an imperfection that defiles mind, abhikku abandons it. You see, the Buddha's teaching actually, when he said one time that at the beginning people cannot catch his teachings because he taught during the Buddha's times, you know, the, most of the people were uneducated. So he said one time, first time maybe they couldn't catch clearly and second time he repeat again and for the third time he said again, they become clear. You know, so Sutta language is like that. First time, second time, and third time. That way, you will be the wise. The knowledge will arise in your mind. You understand, right? So, he said, when a bhikkhu has known that covetousness and unrighteous greed is, a, is an imperfection that defiles mind, and has abandoned it. When a bhikkhu has known that ill will is an imperfection that defiles mind and has abandoned it. When a bhikkhu has known that anger is an imperfection that defiles mind and has abandoned it. When a bhikkhu has known that resentment is an imperfection that defiles mind and has abandoned it. When a bhikkhu has known that contempt is an imperfection that defiles mind and has abandoned it. When a bhikkhu has known that rudeness and impoliteness is an imperfection that defiles mind and has abandoned it. When a bhikkhu has known that envy is an imperfection that defiles mind and has abandoned it. When a bhikkhu has known that greedy materialism is an imperfection that defiles mind and has abandoned it. When a bhikkhu has known that deceit is an imperfection that defiles mind and has abandoned it. When a bhikkhu has known that cheating is an imperfection that defiles mind and has abandoned it. When a bhikkhu has known that the bold headed inflexibility is an imperfection that defiles mind and has abandoned it. When a bhikkhu has known that rivalry is an imperfection that defiles mind and has abandoned it. When a bhikkhu has known that conceit is an imperfection that defiles mind and has abandoned it. When a bhikkhu has known that Arrogance is an imperfection that defiles mind and has abandoned it. When a bhikkhu has known that the vanity is an imperfection that defiles mind and has abandoned it. So when a bhikkhu has known that negligence is an imperfection that defiles mind 
and has abandoned abiko so that way you might become very pure very clear right so you know those are the enemies <laughs> those are the unwholesome things always arising and disturbing me you know in my country even in new york the some of um, buddhist people when they meditate when i close my eyes and i may i practice meditations and you know all the negative things arise in our, in our mind cannot meditate close your eyes and mind go everywhere running like monkey so how can we control our mind you cannot control your mind because they don't know how to do that <laughs> so what do you have to do open up your mind allow the hindrances all those things one of the hindrances right all the unwholesome things allow them as a friend if you think they are my enemy so you are not practicing loving kindness okay <laughs> so you have to allow them as a friend hello friend come arise in my mind because i allow you and when they arise in your mind use the six years there and then they will say okay okay i don't want to stay with you i want to go my place <laughs> so they will go away <laughs> because i have the key already <laughs> so uh, now buddha said if your mind is clear if you can can make your mind pure and what experience you will get abiko acquires perfect confidence in the buddha this in the buddha does the blessed one accomplished full enlightenment full enlightened perfect in true knowledge and contact sublime knower of the worlds incomparable leader of person to be tamed teacher of gods and humans so here gods means deities okay enlightened and blessed iti biso bhagava arahang samma sambuddho vijja sarana sampanno sugato loka vidu anuttaro purisa dhamma saroti satta deva manusanang buddho bhagavati this is the translation okay what he said he has said the blessed one is accomplished fully enlightened perfect in true knowledge and conduct sublime knower of worlds incomparable leader of person to be tame teacher of gods and humans enlightened and blessed blessed right this is the nine qualities of the buddha abikus acquires a perfect confidence in the dhamma thus six qualities of the dhamma swakato bhagavata dhammo sanditiko vakaliko ehi pasiko upanaiko pasatang vedita bovinyo hiti that means the dhamma is well proclaimed by the blessed one visible here and now immediately effective in biting in inspections onward leading to be experienced by the wise for themselves this is the six qualities of the dhamma the next one said 
सुपाटिपन्नो भगवत सवग संगो उजुपाटिपन्नो भगवत सवग संगो यायापाटिपन्नो भगवत सवग संगो सामेशी पाटिपन्नो भगवत सवग संगो यदिदंग सत्तारी पुरीसा योगाने अठा पुरीसा पुगला ऐसा भगवतो सावगा संगो आहुनियो पाहुनियो दक्षिणियो अंजलि करनियो अनुताहरं पुन्याकेतं लोकसति that means a bhikkhu acquires the perfect confidence in the Sangha. Thus, the Sangha of the Blessed One disciple is practiced in the good way, practiced in the straight way, practiced in the true way, practiced in the proper way. That is the four pairs of persons, the eight types of individuals. This Sangha of the Blessed One's disciples is worthy of gifts, worthy of hospitality, worthy of offerings, worthy of reverential salutation, the unsupposed field of merit for the world. So, if somebody offered to you because you are a monk, you should accept it, okay? Don't say, no, 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 I don't, I don't accept. You should not say that. Whatever they offer to you, please accept them. Then you should bless to them. You already know blessing, right? Abhivada nasilesa nichang buddha pachayino Chattharo dhamma vadhanti ayuvanno sukambalang Ayuraruga sampatti saga sampatti Did I say right? <laughs> no. Sabbediyo vibhajanto so guruko vinasato mate bhavatu antaraya suki deva hoko bhava abhivada nasile sang nichang buddha pachayino chattharo dhamma vardhanti Ayuvanno sukambalang bhavatu sabba mangalang rakkantu sabba devata sabba buddha nubhavena sada sukhi bhavantu ti bhavatu sabba mangalang rakkantu sabba devata sabba dhamma nubhavena sada sukhi bhavantu ti bhavatu sabba mangalang Rakkantu sabba devata sabba sangha nubhavena sada soki bhavantu ti. If you think that this blessing is too long, you just say bhavatu sabba mangalang rakkantu sabba dva. You can show it like this, you know. Then, then. <laughs> and then just say that one. Bhavatu sabba mangalang rakkantu sabba devata sabba buddhanu sabba dhammanu sabba sanghanu bhavena sada sutti bhavantu ti. Okay. Blessing for you. Okay. And you can be very happy. Right. This is very short way. If you think that this blessing is very long. <laughs> and uh, some people, you know, they just offer you. And if you give the long blessing, he or she doesn't have time to, to accept, to receive the blessing for you. They said, okay, accept my donation, I have to run now. <laughs> so that way you can say, may you be happy, may you be peaceful, may you be free from suffering. Okay, you can go now. <laughs> this is the short way. <laughs> right? So now Buddha is going to talk about when a bhikkhu has given up, expelled, released, abandoned, and relinquished. The imperfection of mind in part they consider thus I am possessed of perfect confidence in the Buddha and he gains inspirations in the meaning. 
he gains inspirations in the dhamma he gains relief connected to the dhamma when he is relieved joy is born in him in one who is joyful the body becomes tranquil one whose body is tranquil feels happiness in one who is one who feels happy mind becomes collected you see one related another one another one related another one this is almost like dependent origination right and then buddha said ebikku considers thus i am possessed of perfect confidence in the dhamma and he gains inspirations in the meaning he gains inspirations in the dhamma he gains relief connected to the dhamma when a wholesome person that means a bhikkhu is relieved and joy is born in him in one who is joyful the body becomes tranquil one whose body is tranquil feels happy in one who feels happy mind becomes collected then buddha said ebeku considers thus i am possessed of the perfect confidence in the sangha the community of the monks and he gains inspirations in the meaning he gains inspirations in the dhamma he gains relief connected to the dhamma when a bhikkhu is when a wholesome person is relief joy is born in him in one who is joyful the body becomes tranquil a wholesome person whose body is tranquil feels happiness in one who feels happy mind becomes collected this become very clear right you see that's why the nine qualities of the buddha six qualities of the dhamma and nine qualities of the sangha is most important that's why i decided it, because i was talking with the david you know after i've been here because he told me that i when i was in new york he said bante you should come here 28 so that um, at least you can try to rest a little bit and then you can prepare what you, you are going to teach to the meditators so that's why i came here 28 and then we discussed to each other you know and about the nine qualities of the buddha six qualities of the dhamma and nine qualities of the sangha if we put in the list what do you think he said okay great that will be fine so that's why we are it you know So now the said abiku considered thus the imperfection of mind have in part been given up expelled released abandoned and relinquished by me he gains inspirations in the meaning he gains inspirations in the dhamma he gains relief connected to the dhamma when a wholesome person is relieved joy is born in him in one who is joyful the body becomes tranquil a wholesome person whose body is tranquil feels happiness in a person who feels happy mind becomes collected now he is going to talk about the precept so when you keep the precept it will be very very helpful for your meditations that's why wherever even though i mean you see at dhamma sutra meditation center whoever come for practicing meditation they must take the eight precept especially for lay people you know for the monastery for the novice ten precept you know so people are coming from the different background from different traditions So whenever they come at Dhamma Sutra Meditation Center for practicing meditations, so they accept the eight precept, and they are getting benefit. When they practice meditation, they are they attain jhana. You know, 
most of them they attain jhana within two two three days first jhana second jhana very quickly you know so they practice themselves and they know what they are doing so that's why the precept is the most important for meditation you break up the precept and you see you can sit longer or not you can try yourself you feel guilty you know he said oh before my meditation was very good i came here four times five times that time my meditation was excellent but this time i don't know what happened because you broke the precept and then you didn't go to the teacher so whenever any meditator come here we always tell them okay if you break the precept let me know we are going we are going to give them again precept so that way you feel free you are purified you know and then your meditation will develop very quickly so now buddha is going to talk about uh, precept virtue a bit bhikkhu if a bhikkhu of such virtue such a state of collectedness and such wisdom its feed uh, its food consisting of soils hill rice alone with various sauces and curries i repeat again this one such wisdom its food consisting of soils hill rice alone with the various sauces and curries even that will be no obstacle for them just as a cloth that is defiled and stained becomes pure and bright with the help of clear water or just as gold becomes pure and bright with the help of a furnace so too if a bhikkhu of such virtue such a state of collectedness and such wisdom its food consisting of soils hill rice along with the various sauces and curries even that will be no obstacle for them so now he is going to explain the brahma vihara so all of you already practicing brahma vihara right now loving kindness compassion joy and equanimity metta karuna mudita upekka right so he is going to teach now brahma vihara to the those monks because those monks were the advanced meditator and he said a bhikkhu avoids pervading one quarter with a mind imbued loving kindness likewise the second likewise the third likewise the fourth that means forward backward left side right side above below and then all direction so above below around and everywhere and to all as to oneself they avoid pervading the all encompassing world with a mind imbued with loving kindness abandoned exalted immeasurable with a hostility and without ill now he is going to talk about compassion the base of infinite space a bhikkhu avoids pervading one quarter with a mind imbued imbued with compassion likewise the second likewise the third likewise the fourth so above below around and everywhere and to all as to oneself so a bhikkhu avoids pervading the all encompassing world with a mind imbued with compassion abandoned exalted immeasurable with a hostility and without ill so if you know the how to radiate loving kindness to yourself and to your spiritual friend so that way you attain the first jhana second jhana third jhana fourth jhana 
and when you're feeling good top of your head then you are the advanced meditator you'll have a equanimity mind balance neither neither pleasure nor painful you know you're feeling when you go to the top of your head don't press down okay this is the good sign for you so let it be there and then if you think that okay i want to radiate loving kindness to my family members so that can you that way you can radiate loving kindness okay first bring the dad that is in front of me then you radiate loving kindness to, and your mom your sister your brother your husband your wife your any relatives one by one one by one you can radiate loving kindness even your enemy that moment no problem and after that you can radiate loving kindness six direction and all direction okay so if you know how to radiate the loving kindness six direction all direction compassion is easy the same way you radiate right and now he is going to talk about joy so when your meditation will change from loving kindness to the compassion so that way you experience the base of infinite space because that is the base of infinite space right no body at all only mind when you sit one hour two hours three hours four hours i am very happy that someone sit in the five hours almost six hours in this retreat wow i cannot sit for more than five or four hours but they are doing great you know some of here some of the some meditators actually they sit 6 hours almost 6 hours can you imagine so more you see it more your meditation go deeper 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 if you see only you know in new york my center when we have the big ceremony i tell okay everybody close the eyes we are going to practice meditation now 5 minutes because they are not practicing meditation you know we, I, at least i should teach them something <laughs> okay close your eyes we are going to uh, practice meditation and then then they close their eyes you know everybody ready 5 minutes but if you say one hour they will leave <laughs> and then when i close my eyes and i open hey everybody gone <laughs> so at least 5 hours ah bande say 5 hours maybe after 5 hours he ring the bell again <laughs> second bell and they open their eyes right <laughs> so at least we try we encourage them to do something to do some wholesome action you know so now buddha is going to explain the joy joy meditation a bhikkhu avoids pervading one quarter with a mind imbued with joy like with the second like with the third like with the fourth so above below around and everywhere and to all as to oneself Abhikkhu avoids pervading the all-encompassing world with a mind imbued with joy, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill. So when you meditate, you attain the compassion already, karuna, the base of infinite space, no body at all, and then from that stage, your meditation change to joy, the base of infinite consciousness. So that stage, you will. you can see how the consciousness is rising passing away rising passing away rising passing away so that is this afflict joy rise in your mind you, you you when your mind is very sharp you can see the the series of the consciousness and the link of dependent origination and in your mind will arise everything is impermanent what is impermanent that one is suffering there is no me no my no i am so three characteristics will arise in your mind you understand like wakkali the monk who came in front of buddha and then just watching 
his body like television and later on he experienced impermanence before jumping from the mountain and he decided he will pass away but he understood oh if i jump and i'll die and my body will be impermanent so the buddha threw his metta loving kindness to him and before jumping he at an enlightenment get in aram and flew to the buddha, buddha arrived to the buddha way so that is stage especially most of the meditators experience impermanence suffering and non self and they could see the link of different doors in that stage the joy mudita right mudita so a big co avoids providing one quarter with mind like imbued love equanimity okay, so yeah joy mudita i already explained that right and um, the base of nothingness so from that stage so you it you meditation will change automatically to joy nothingness so here most of the meditator the stage of nothingness the base of the nothingness so they are just waiting to be, to to become sutapanna that's why last night i talked about the sutapanna sutta now you know all the knowledge is if you have it you are in the right track you in the right path some of them base of nothingness some of them neither perception none of non perception comes and downs comes and downs just waiting for maybe cessation and cessation happen then got it right so i big go avoid spreading one quota with mind imbued with equanimity like with the second like with the third like with the fourth so above below around and everywhere and to all as to oneself a bhikkhu avoids providing the all encompassing world with a mind in with equanimity abandoned exalted immeasurable with a hostility and without ill a bhikkhu understands that there is this there is the inferi- inferior there is the superior and beyond there is an escape from this world field of perce- perception his mind is liberated from the taint of sensual desire from the taint of being from the taint of ignorance when it is liberated there when it is liberated there comes the knowledge it is liberated a big one understands birth is destroyed the holy life has been light so what is the purpose to become monk buddhananda now you understand right you see buddha is talking about i give the reference now don't believe me what i said in the interview but <laughs> right he has said you see it is liberated a big one understand both is destroyed the holy life have been light this is the purpose to become monk you know what had to be done has been done there is no more coming to any state of being this big quiz call one bait with the inner baiting okay so now that moment sundar bhammi sundarika came to the buddha now on that occasion the bhammi sundarika baradwaja was sitting not far from the blessed one then he said to the blessed one but does master gotama go to bahuka river to bait why bhammi go to bahuka river what can the bahuka river do master gotama bahuka river is held by many to give liberation this is the brahmin 
Sundarika Dwaza concept. Okay? It is held by many to give merit. Only go to take shower and then you get the merit from there. <laughs> and many wash away their evil actions in the Bahuka river. Then the Blessed One addressed the Brahmin Sundarika Bharadwaja in strangers. Bahuka and Adikaka, Gaya and Sundarika too, Payaga and Sarasati, and the stream Bahumata. A fool may there forever bait. Those who are foolish, only they go to take shower there. But we are not foolish people. Right? So he said, a fool may there forever bait, yet will not purify dark deeds. Okay? What can the Sundarika bring to pass? What the Payaga, what the Bahuka that cannot purify an evil doer? A man who has done cruel and brutal deeds, one purify in heart has evermore the feast of a spring, the holy day. One fear and one fear in act, one pure in heart brings his virtue to perfection. That's why when you keep the perfection, you'll gain the merit. You can develop your meditation very well. This is the Buddha's advice. Not for going in the Bahuka river and take shower, you know, and then all the evil things will go away. No, this is not the, his concept. You know? So he said, It is here, Brahmin, that you should wait. And if you speak no falsehood, nor work harm for living beings, nor take what is offered not with faith and free from average. What need for you to go to Gaya? For any well will be your Gaya. When this was said, the Brahmin Sundarika Bharat was a said, magnificent Master Gautama magnificent. Master Gautama has made the Dhamma clear in many ways. So he understood. At the beginning, he, he didn't, right? As though he were turning upright what had been overturned, revealing what was hidden, showing the way to one who was lost or holding up a lamp in the dark for those with eyesight to see forms. I go to Master Gautama for refuge. Of course, you are taking the refuge every morning, right? So after listening Dhamma talk, he said, I go to Master Gautama for refuge and to the Dhamma and to the Sangha of monks. I would receive the green fold under Master Gautama, okay, that means you want to get the novice ordination, you know. So I want, I don't want to stay at the home. I want to get a novice ordination and I stay at the temple, the monastery. That one is the most important. You know, when you get ordination, please don't stay at home. Your place is monastery. Your place is the meditation center, you know. So what is the difference if you got the ordination and I stay with the, uh, the family people? No difference, right? So when you stay at the monastery, you can keep the precept, quiet, meditate. You can develop your mind very well. But if you are still with the family, they have a lot of things to do, you know. Then they may some of them they criticize about that family, this family, about this, about that. So you break up the precept all the time. <laughs> right? So 
holy light. Buddha here said holy light. When you get ordination, please just a monastery, please just a meditation center. Because your life is monastic life. That's why we say monastic training. You must have monastic training when you get wear the robe. When you get novice ordination or in monk. Without monastic training, you are in danger. Remember that, okay? Without monastic training, you are in the danger. You may break up the parajika. You may commit the parajika. So that way, even though in the future you want to become monk, full ordination, you will never get a chance to become monk. So that's why whenever, for the novice, no problem, they have ten precept. But when you get a higher ordination, full admission, so you have to be very careful. So according to the Buddhist tradition, monastic uh, way, <coughs> monks and novice, we have, you know, rainy retreat. So during the rainy retreat, you cannot travel. Who are very disciplined monk, they never do that. Who don't care. I don't care the discipline rule. Even the, during the rainy retreat, they go from one country to another country, one place to another place. So according to 227 rules, so coming July 21st, we are going to determine for three months retreat and it will be end October 16. So three months we cannot go anywhere. Of course if somebody passed away, then it you help, then it the service. You can go there from Missouri to New York only for one week. But you have to determine in front of the Buddha. Buddha I am going to New York. So I determined that I will come back after seven, after before seven days. I will come back again. So that way you never you don't break up. You what you you don't break up the retreat, three months retreat. You are fine. You can go only for seven days. But if you pass the seven days, then you cannot receive cutting a rope. If any people want to offer Bhante, you stay here three months. I want to do, I want to offer cutting a rope to you. So you already, when you went to my center, you saw how, how many people came. A lot of people, right? Especially the Buddhist people in Bangladesh, they believe that when they can participate, can offer one cutting a rope to the monks they gain a lot of merit. So when you determine here, okay, I determine here three months retreat and I'm not going outside and if somebody passed away in St. Louis, okay, I go there and I stay there one night. But you have to determine for seven days, you know. Within seven days you must come back. So that way your, your running retreat is fine. No problem. So, especially in Burma, Thailand, you know, in my country, and then as who are following the Theravada tradition, you know, most of the Buddhist people know during the Vasa, during the rainy retreat, monk never travel. When Buddhist people know that you are traveling, they start hating you. They think that you are not good monk. You are not disciplined monk. So some of them make such that you are the business monk. So you are traveling for the money. So they can criticize. They will criticize about you. You know, especially who are Buddhist. But for non-Buddhist no problem because they don't know that, right? So. Whenever they see Buddhist monk, they will sir, how are you? Because they are Buddhist, they are no Buddhist monk and they respect you. But 
during the wash oh now is the wash rich rich rainy season now and those monks supposed to uh, stay at a temple and practice meditation do some sort of keep the precept and now they are traveling here and they are going there and this is not the right way the people criticize you know especially in my my country is very strong about it you know that because most of the people they know the rainy retreat man supposed should not go outside you know and if you go you cannot receive the katrina rule very strict rule so that's why now this year will be my mang manghood 23 years i never break up the rainy retreat even here when i came here last time to 2016 and bante we told me to get the dhamma talk but i am not ready for giving dhamma talk you know and i said to david i am not going going to give dhamma talk and david went to bante hey, bante i am not going to give dhamma talk and bante came here said hachananda i heard that you are not giving dhamma talk right yes bante okay think about it i give you only one day <laughs> tomorrow when you come dining hall you tell me if you don't get dhamma talk leave dhamma sukha meditation center <laughs> and then if you want to stay here please give dhamma talk <laughs> so then the was i didn't want to leave you see three months i determined here for stay here three months for practicing meditation i didn't want to leave and i decided okay and i told him bante you know i never delivered dhamma talk to american people my english is not good he said your english is excellent so you can give the talk whatever you have experience why why you are not going to share to them you can share to them whatever you have experience do it then no way because i don't want to go back new york and then i was thinking okay let me try and then first day i gave the dhamma talk i think kusambi sutta just da 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 just reading the sutta you know no no comment you know so that's why rainy retreat the most important for the monk the monk should not uh, leave you know so so he said i go to the master gotama for refuge because he understood to what the buddha explained you know and to the dhamma and to the sangha of monks i receive the going forth under master gotama that means i will not stay at home after getting ordination i will stay at the monastery i will stay at the meditation center and i receive the full ordination that means higher ordination so here all of you got the novice ordinations only i can i can give you the novice ordination but the full ordination i cannot i cannot give you alone i need the sangha and it at least five monks you know so i can ordain you as a samanada but not as a bhikkhu so the five at least according to discipline rules 10 monks must be present but in new york is very difficult to find 10 monks you know so if we cannot find 10 monks at least we need the sangha you know so sang 